Hey, welcome. We're going today. We're going to make some uh, some deep dish pizza. It's been in my family for about 36 generations. So you're going to get yourself a treat today. Um, let's start with the ingredients for the dough. First of all, we got half a cup of oil, or you can do uh, eight tablespoons. It don't matter. You got half a teaspoon of salt half a teaspoon sugar, a full teaspoon of yeast, which if you bite a little packets of yeast, you're gonna have to measure that out. Over here we got one and a half cup water. And over here I use uh, King Arthur all-purpose flour. And over here we got four and a half cups of flour, so what you want to do is take your yeast first, pour it in the water, take your sugar, pour it in the water, give it a little mix around, you know, mix that up a little bit. And what this is going to do is activate the yeast. It's going to get all uh, foamy. Give it about 10 minutes and uh, we'll come back. All right, we're back. If you'll notice, the yeast is more cloudy now. If you actually sit here and watch it, you'll see a little burst pop up to the top. That's how you know your yeast is activated. And if it's not doing that, either you killed your yeast because the water was too hot, or your yeast just sucks and you need to start over again. So as long as it's activated like it should be, go ahead and dump it in your mixer by the way this is for two pizzas so if you're just gonna make one you know cut everything in half uh, put your salt in by the way salt will kill your yeast if you mix it in the water so that's why I saved it for here and then your butter Let's put all those in together. Yeah, butter too. That's what I was using. You can use corn oil, vegetable oil. I use butter. We're gonna let that run for probably two to three minutes. Alright, it's going about three minutes. You don't want to, I mean, make it kind of like you would a biscuit, you know. Just enough to get everything mixed up, but not well kneaded like your New York style dough or anything, you know. Just a, just a biscuity type crust. Over here, we got a scale. That's what I used to separate my weights. So, yeah, it's usually about 20 ounces separated between the two, so go ahead and mix that. You can weigh it however you want, but so that could be 20, 40. That's probably close. 20, 45, 20, 35. Sprinkle that. There you go. Make it feel better. So I kind of make it in a little ball here. I got these off Amazon too. I'll put it in the description if you guys want these. Come in handy. Do a little uh, butter spray on here so it don't stick. This is where I'm going to keep these to rise. Do the same thing to the other one. And you want to keep these stored in a warm area for about an hour. You know, people say you need to leave it for two days, you know, get that good flavor in there, but nobody's got time for that. 
I want to eat it tonight, so we'll come back in an hour. I'll stick these over by the oven where it's warm, so we'll see you back in an hour. All right, we're back. Our dough is risen. Risen enough. I mean, it's probably been about an hour and a half. So, I mean, this however long it takes, it don't matter. You can do it in an hour, an hour and a half. It don't matter. Right here, here's the uh, key ingredient of sauce we use. It's all-purpose ground tomatoes, six in one. I'll put a link on the video, but you can't find this everywhere. If you can't find it over here, you can just mix these two together. Get some puree and some crushed tomatoes. You definitely, this is like a lot of sauce here. This one can right here will make two pizzas for you. This uh, will make four, so you might just have to have some extra left over if you do it that way. So right now, you got your pan. You wanna go ahead and spray it. A lot of times, you can just use actual butter to, uh, you know, vegetable oil, it don't matter. This is a lot easier though, just spray it down. Get your dough out, plop it in. Go ahead and push it around the sides. Don't you think you got the bottom flattened out good enough? Go around the sides and start raising it up. I mean, people say deep dish is like a thick crust, but it's really just a deep dish. That's all it is. It's like a pie. So there, I mean, it looks... From that perspective, you know, it looks kind of like a pie crust. You're going to make an apple pie or something. Alright, so next, uh, you want to spray some more oil. Or fake butter down there. What this is going to do is separate the cheese from the crust, you know. And since we're putting sauce on top, it'll kind of keep the bottom crust from getting too soggy. This is mozzarella, by the way. So we got that. We put some uh, over here. I got some shredded mozzarella. Let's go ahead and put some of that on there, too. I kind of lay the slices down, that way it's just kind of like a a sheet of cheese on the bottom. This is more or less to fill the holes and get some extra cheese in there. Make it a super deep dish, cheesy pizza. After you get that done, that's when you want to go ahead and put whatever toppings you're going to use. This one's going to be pretty simple, just uh, pepperoni. Always like using the big deli sliced pepperoni, like we used to eat back in Italy. You know, the big Italian sandwiches we did. This stuff has a lot of flavor. And if you're going to do sausage or something, I mean, you can do raw sausage. Because this thing's going to cook for a while, just like a pie. But I always try to cover up 
any cheese I might see. This thing you can eat like one slice and you're gonna be full. So that's pretty simple pie there. Take my six and one tomatoes. And this is just straight out of the can, nothing. You just want a tomato flavor. You know, you don't need any pizza sauce when you're making a deep dish. I'll show you why here in a minute. Just kind of spread that around. Once you add about half a can of that, go ahead and just spread it around as good as you can on there. I mean, you can really use how much ever sauce you want on this. If you're a saucy person, go ahead and load it up. All right, next thing I do, just get some cheap Italian seasoning, it don't matter. I mean, whether it's you know, ten dollars and ninety-nine cents. You ain't gonna tell that much of a difference. Trust me on that. Sprinkle that on top. This is dry seasoning, so when this thing's baking, you know all that flavor is gonna get absorbed in the tomato sauce there. So it'll essentially turn kind of into a pizza type sauce. Next thing you want to do is put some. Parmesan cheese on there. Once had a guy tell me he wanted some Parmesan cheese. It's like, get out of here, man. It's the last time he ever ate pizza at that place, that's for sure. Parmesan cheese. And man, that's it, man. He just. A pepperoni pie. I'll show you what it looks like when it gets done. We got the oven set for 450. All right. I set the oven actually at 425. That took roughly 27 minutes. That one's the pepperoni one I just took out of the pan. This one over here is the cheese. Made them pretty simple today. Let's see if I can show you how to get this out of the pan without screwing it up. Yeah, you just use uh, pliers for the pan, you know. Whoopsie daisies. There you go. You see that wiggle there? That's because all the cheese is still really hot. So you might let that sit for a couple minutes, cool down. Um, we can go ahead and I'll slice into this pepperoni one here. Nice golden brown crust. Yeah, there you go. Now you can kind of see uh, the layers there. Oh yeah, this cheese one here. If I were to cut into it right now, the cheese would be all over the place so I'm gonna let it set up but you get the idea pretty simple to make pretty good I never call Parmesan Parmesan 